Barak Yahua, Ruma Mu Yahua, Allahu Yah, all esteem to our great King Yahua, who is Yahusha, Ruma Mu Yahua. Shabbat Shalom, beloved family. Shabbat Shalom, Barak Yahua. All esteem to our great King, man. I'm telling you, Yahua is amazing. Ruma Mu Yahua, Tuda Rabba Yahua, Tuda, Tuda Yahua, Barak Yahua. Now, Welcome, welcome, everyone, to another beautiful day that Yahuwah has made. This is Yah's Shabbat Yom, Allah Hu Yah, that he has made for us, Allah Hu Yah, to rest, to be re-energized in him, you know, to re-fix our focus. If it has been out of line, we can come like that. This is a service time. Like when your car needs to be serviced and you bring it to the garage, a mechanic, this is what... This is all about to, to be service, to worship Yahuwah, to esteem Yahuwah, to reflect, to look back, Allah, to thank Yahuwah, to praise him, to put him first on this one day that he has access for. And that's what we do on this day, Barak Yahuwah. And for today's lesson, Barak Yahuwah, I want to go over something with you guys that we have misunderstood. And this is why this one is titled Misconception Regarding the Scriptures. And the subtopic is the Feast of First Fruits slash Pentecost. We uh, had a misunderstanding with this feast, Barak Yahuwah. And for those who use our calendar, you will notice that the calendar is different from most, especially with the feast days. So in this video, I'm going to explain it a little bit more, show you the scripture so you all can understand. Barak Yahuwah, Yahusha, Ruma, Mu, Yahuwah. So that there will be no confusion or anything of the sort because, you know, Yahuwah is not the author of confusion. And Yahuwah doesn't want us to be in ignorance. So he's going to teach us, he's going to show us, he's going to educate us. Allah, yeah. So we're going to look at the Feast of First Roots slash Pentecost and also the seven feast days, the seven Kangaman. Uh, menorah or Kangastan because there's something that we got wrong and we need to correct that Barak Yahuwah so we're going to be diving into Uya Kara Leviticus 23 Ruma Mu Yahuwah to the Rabbi Yahuwah and this is where we find you know all the seven feasts Barak Yahuwah now it starts out to read and says and Yahuwah spoke unto Masha saying Speak unto the children of Yasharal and say unto them, Concerning the feast of Yahuwah, which you shall proclaim to be Kadash assemblies, even these are my feasts. So we know they will say in religion, Oh, the feast days are done away with, or they will say, You know, those are Jewish feasts, those are for the Jewish people and all that nonsense. But right here, Yahuwah says it and made it clear, These are his feasts. His feast and if you are his if you are his servants then you should be keeping the feast if you're not keeping the feast then you are not his because he made it clear it never said these are a special person our nation type feast these are for special nations only only this nation can keep these feasts and never said that there's nowhere here you can find that nowhere here so they are adding to Yah's word and taken away from it because they're taking away the truth and adding lies to Yah's word. So as you can clearly see, and you can search this in any translation you want. You can go to the KJV, you can go to the NIV, whatever translation, and it will still say it will still be clear that the feast days are Yahuwah's. No. Look at verse three. Look at the first one that he breaks down, everyone. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of rest, a Kadash assembly. You shall do no work therein. It is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. It is the Shabbat of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. All your dwellings. Dwellings means wherever you live, wherever you reside. Because I know people will come and say, um, we're not in you know, Jerusalem, so we can't keep the feast days and all that stuff. That again, that's something that they don't understand. Remember, Jerusalem exists no more. It's, it's a waste. It's desolate. 
We are Jerusalem. Jerusalem is going to be re, um, brought down from the, the Shamaim. Yahuwah now dwells within us. So wherever Yahuwah dwells, that's where his name is. And his name is within us. So wherever we are, Yahuwah is there. That's what he said in his words. And that's what a lot of persons don't understand today. Wherever Yah, wherever we are, Yah is. No. Verse 4. So notice the first one that he started out with is the Shabbat. And this is something that we overlooked during the feast or back in the day when we were looking at the feast. Especially when we were looking at the feast day like Purim and, 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 and the others. Like Hanukkah. Or Hanukkah as some call it. Now before you go and celebrate Purim because based on the timeline and the dates that would be in next month. So before you go and celebrate Purim, you need to go and check out the video that I did regarding Esther, the book of Esther, Queen Esther. Go and check out that video on the channel because Esther is not who you think she is. So before you go and celebrate that feast, go and celebrate, go and watch that video regarding Esther. It's Queen Esther of Oaks. Now, so the first that he starts out with is the Shabbat. The first thing that he breaks down, look at it. First thing. Is the Shabbat. These are the feasts of Yahuwah. Even a Kadash assembly you shall proclaim in the appointed times. Because every feast days you have an assembly. Every single feast day. The Shabbats. The, all the feast days. The Shabbats and all the feast days you have an assembly. That's his word. Now he continues. In the 14th day of the first month. At evening. Is Yahuwah's Passah. And for those who don't know, a day begins at evening. So the Shabbat would be from evening unto evening. So the Shabbat would be from FRI day on the pagan Gregorian calendar, FRI day to SAT day at evening. I don't care what anyone wants to say about it. Some people say, oh, those are pagan names and pagan terms, and you can't keep the you know, because of the name S-A-T-U, S-A-T-U-R, which is from S-A-T-U-R-N, they said that's why they don't keep the feast there because it's named after a mighty one. But I want you to understand something, Mashbaka. If that's their reason for not keeping the, the Shabbat there, the feast of Shabbat there, then that's a stupid reason. Here's why. Every other day of the week, ha their names have been tampered with have been changed to something pagan every single day of the week. It was originally called, in the Abri terms, Yom Rishun, which means day one, our first day. Yom Shani, second day. That's how it was termed in the Abri language. And the seventh day would have been called the Shabbat, or Yom Shabbat, the seventh day. Now they change these names. So for the first day of the week, they change it to being Sunday, Sun Worship Day. Second day of the week, Monday, Moon Worship Day. And then the others like T Day, W Day, T H Day, F R I Day, S A T Day are all names after pagan mighty ones, after idols. These, all these other ones are named after idols. The first two that I told you about, well, not the first two, but Sunday and Monday, well, the first two, they are named after what? The sun and the moon, because we know that these pagans, they worship the sun and the moon. They worship the moon and the sun as their mighty one. So they name it after the sun and the moon. But it's still also named after Nimrod, you know, in honor to Nimrod and Semiramis, because Nimrod is claimed to be the sun, the sun mighty one. And then Semiramis has told her story that she came from the moon within an egg. So that's being in homage or honor to Nimrod and Semiramis. But the other days of the week are named after pagan mighty one names. That's why I haven't called them. That's why I haven't said it. So if your reason for not keeping the Shabbat on FRI day to SAT day is because those two days are named after mighty ones, then which day do you keep it then? Because a lot of people say W day. 
WD is still named after a pagan mighty one. TD is still named after a pagan mighty one. THD is still named after a pagan mighty one. So the only two other days that are not really named after a mighty one, it gives honor to a mighty one in that way when they change the name. But the day does not give honor to it. It's just the name. The only two other day that does not have a pagan mighty one's name is Sunday or Monday. So that's the only two days you can choose then to say you're going to do the Shabbat. And we already know what Sunday is. Sunday is the mark of the beast's authority. That's the mark of the beast's authority. Sunday of the Catholic CH. And then Monday, look at it, Monday. So I've heard that excuse before where someone told me that, you know, SAT is the mighty one, S-A-T-U-R-N. So he doesn't or she doesn't keep the Shabbat there. And I ask them, when do you keep the Shabbat then? And then they'll say to me, WD. So I'm like, isn't WD still named after? A, is, isn't WD after a mighty one's name? So I don't get it. Not a reason that I've heard, not an excuse that I've heard. It's because those Jewish people keep the Shabbat that way. They keep the Shabbat, you know, from FRI evening, FRI day when the sun goes down to SAT day when the sun goes down. And that will be their excuse as well. Oh, because they do it at that time. I don't keep it. I don't keep the Shabbat there. Now, if that's the case, then that's also another dumb and stupid excuse. Because if, if it's because they do it at that time, you don't do it, then they speak Hebrew. So you shouldn't speak Hebrew. You shouldn't use any Hebrew word because they use Hebrew words. You, they speak Hebrew, so you shouldn't speak it. Even though it's not fully Hebrew, but you get what I'm saying. They wear zeeps, so you shouldn't wear zeeps then. You see what I'm saying? We, we, cannot, we cannot allow because of the nonsense of what Hashatan is doing to keep us away from the truth. It's all distractions. And these are the, the, the lines that I've heard and the stupid excuses that I've heard. So if you do your research and due diligence, you realize that the days of the week really did not change. All they changed and tampered with was the name. And what they changed was they shift the Shabbat from being on the seventh day to being on the first day. But they did not change the, 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 the order. Day one is always day one, which is Sunday. Day two is what they call today, Monday. So that did not change. They just change when we keep our Shabbat, which is the seventh day of the week. And they removed it. They moved it from being the seventh day of the week to now the first day of the week. And then they changed the names, that, the titles that they were called by, day one, day two, day three, day four. That's how it should have been in the English. And in the, uh, in the Aborit, it should have been Yom Rishun, Yom Shani, Yom Shalishi, Yom Rabbi. It should have been the, all these things. They changed the names as well. So people are just saying this out of hurt and anger and ignorance. So Yah Shabbat is from FRI day at evening to SAT day at evening. Whenever the sun goes down. And the sun goes down at different time because the sun gets a certain amount of hours to rule the daylight. The same thing with the moon as well. The night, the daylight and the and the night. The hours change. If you look at the calendar, if you look at the equinox and look at the calendar, the Enoch and all that stuff, you will see this. So I know some people will be like, oh, it's from 6, 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. the next day. No, it's not always 6 p.m. Sometimes the sun goes down after 5. Depending where you are, sometimes it's after 4. After 6, sometimes even 7, 8. So depending on where you are, you need to find out when the sun goes down for you during that time period. And that's when your Shabbat begins. So glad we got that out of the way, Barak Yahuwah Yahusha. So that's the first one. So mark that as one. Second one is what? The Passah, Yahuwah's Passah. And this is to be done on the 14th day of the first month at evening. And I'll show you the calendar so you can see that. That's the second one. The third one is what? Matzah. And this is done the next day. 
This is on the 15th day of the same month. The 15th day of the same month. Which same month? That's the first month. So the 14th day of the first month is Yaz Pasah. And then the 15th day of the first month, the very next day, is Matzah, unleavened bread. And seven days is this feast to be kept for seven days. And now Yahuwah breaks it down. In the first day, you shall keep a Kadash assembly and do no servile work. You don't work for hire. And it's the same thing with the last day as well. The, on the last day, you do no servile work. And on both days, you keep what? A Kadash assembly. Always assemble on every single feast, every Shabbat. Always have an assembly. Our ancestors did this. The apostles did this. So must we. Allah we are. Now let us continue. Let's just go to verse 10 now. And this is where it gets a bit confusing. And this is where we got thrown off. Even back in the day, this is how I kept it. You know, even how Yeshai kept it and all that stuff. This is how we all kept it. But then Yahuwah told me to go back and read it. Because when I did the count, remember, we already had the Shabbat, which is the first. Then we have Hosah, which is the second. Then we have Matzah, which is the third. Now, if you count the Feast of First Fruits separate from Pentecost, then the Feast of First Fruits right here would be the fourth and Pentecost the fifth. If you continue to count, you'll get to eight. But there's no eight Kangastan menorah. It's only seven. There are seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bulls, seven days of the week. The number is seven. Yah's number is seven. He loves the number seven. So that's something that I had to look into that wasn't really sitting well with me. And Yahuwah told me to go back and read it. Then he told me another place to go and read two righteous person who kept the feast of first fruits. And there was, and there's the date. He placed the date there so we can see. So I'm not trying to throw off anyone or mislead anyone. I'm going to prove it with scripture. Now, right here is where we got it wrong. Now, verse 10 says, speak unto the children of Yasharal and say unto them, when you are come into the land, which I give unto you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then shall you bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Notice it says a sheaf of the first fruits of the harvest unto the the priest. Now, when I saw that word, Yahuwah had me to look at that word. And I'm like, wait, sheaf? What, what, what does that mean? What does sheaf mean? Let me show you on the screen real quick, Barak Yahuwah. Let me show you what that word means because we got to research. We got to look these things up. It says a sheaf of the first fruits. It did not say the first fruits. Bring your first fruit. It says a sheaf. But what is a sheaf? Let me show you what this means. Here it is. We're on Google. And the word sheaf is on the screen. Barak Yahuwah. And it says sheaf. It's a known. Which means a bundle of green stalks. Laid lent, lent ways and tied together after reaping. A bundle. A bundle into sheaves. A bundle. So like a certain portion or an amount. Let me see if I can show you guys some images of what this would look like. This is what a sheaf would look like. So you see, this is what a sheaf would look like. Certain bundles, like bundles tied together. Sheaf of the green. So you see, a sheaf. This is what a sheaf is. So when I looked at this and looked at this word, then it started to make sense. Yahuwah was not saying we should bring, let's remove this word right here, sheaf. Then you shall bring the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. No. It says, then you shall bring a sheaf or a bundle of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. It's like saying in, in, in simpler terms, bring some of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Not all, some of it. That's what Yahuwah was saying right here. Bring some of it unto the priest, not the first fruits. And this is where we got it wrong. 
when we read this and based on the understanding we thought right here this is where first fruits began this is what first fruits you know was about and all stuff so it's just saying bring a sheaf a bundle of the first fruits unto the priest and this is what the priest is going to do with it and he shall wave the sheaf before yahuwah to be accepted for you on the morrow after the shabbat the priest shall wave it now let me show you on the calendar where that would be rock yahuwah so here we are, M A R C H. Even these, even these um, names of the months have been tampered with as well. Except for, except for, I would say I wouldn't really say July and August, even though it's tampered with as well. But it's not named after a mighty one. They give that in honor to July is from Julius Caesar and August is from Augustus Caesar. So they name it after those, you know, leaders, those kings. But then when you look at September, November, October, September, well, sorry, Salaki. September, October, November, December. When you look at these ones, if you look at the Greek and look at what is the name for 10, 9, these are their names. Sep means 7. Oct, octo means 8. November, nov, means nine. December, decimal, des, means ten. So if you continue the count, if December is the tenth month, then that means J-A-N would be the eleventh month. F-E-B would be the twelfth month. Here it is right here, F-E-B. Ashar Shaniya, the twelfth month. Now when you get to M-A-R, you get back to what? The first month, abib ya. Because this is a time that Yasharal spring forth from Mitzrayim. And what is the meaning for the word Abib? Go look it up. In the English Bible, you will see it as A-B-I-B. -I -B. Go look up what it means. It means to spring or to spring forth. And that's what Yasharal did. They sprung forth from Mitzrayim. And also in this month period is when spring begins. Huruma, Mu Yahuwah. This is right after winter. So this is the perfect time to renew the, the, the beginning, to renew the, the, the year. Allahu ya. So for 2024, this year, Barak Yahuwah, Abib Ya 1 will fall on WD. It will always fall on WD. Always fall on WD at evening. Always. That won't change. Only the pagan did change because they tampered with it a long time ago. They had it perfectly corrected. They had it perfectly corrected and aligned, but they tampered with it a long time ago. So the pagan dates, the Gregorian calendar dates, their numbers, when I say dates, their number, this will always change. But the days of the week where the feast days fall on, a bib fall on, all right, look at it. Pasa, Yaz Pasa is on TD. If you go back to 2023 calendar that I had, you will always see it as TD. And it will always remain as TD. But the dates is going to change. So, last year, well, 2023, because, you know, basically we are still in, we, the year really hasn't changed. The Gregorian calendar year has changed. So, 2023, the first of Abibya was on the 14th of MAR. Now, for 2024, the first of Abibia, as you can see, is on the 13th of MAR. So their year has changed. Ours has not yet changed until we get to Abib. So it's not a new year for us yet. But for them, it's a new year. Because we know they start their year on the 10, the 11th month, J-N. Now we got the Aspasar right here. Then we got unleavened bread the next day for seven days. And during that time period, here it is, the end of the seventh day. Then on, then after the Shabbat, this is at, at sundown. So remember, Shabbat starts here at F R I day at evening starts here, and it ends at S A T U R day at evening here. And this is where the sheaf of the first fruits wave offering happens. And then you will start to count the fifty count the seven Shabbats after this. So 
the Shabbat after this Shabbat would be the first cone. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until you get to seven. And then the day after the seventh Shabbat, would, you would mark as 50, 50 days. Mm -hmm. Barak Yahuwah. So when examining the scripture properly, you will see and understand that we misinterpreted or misread Yah's word. This is where the sheaf of the first fruit will fall, the bundle that you bring unto the priest for him to weave it before Yahuwah for you. But this is not the day of first fruits yet. Now let's go back to the reading of Yah's word. All right, to show you what sheaf is and all that stuff, so now you have a better understanding. So if you read it along here, he'll tell you, you know, how it should be offered, weave, bring it on to the priest with the lamb without blemish. First year for a burnt offering unto Yahuwah, the meat offering thereof, and he tells you all that you need. We don't need to do this now today. We know that, you know, um, animal sacrifices, that's done away with. We don't need to do this today. So I'm not going to really dive into this, but I'm going to skip over this a bit and go down. And right here it says, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbat. From the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Shabbats shall be completed. Even the morrow after the seven Shabbat shall you number 50 days. And you shall offer a new meat offering unto Yahuwah. Now listen to this. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave, two wave loaves of the two tent deals. They shall be of fine flour, and they shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto Yahuwah. They are the first fruits unto Yahuwah. This is where you see he speaks about the first fruits. No. Notice it does not say the sheaf of. Or bundle or something. It says that this is the first fruits unto Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Kalahu Yah. Now, if you continue to read down some more, verse 20, it says, And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before Yahuwah with two lambs, and they shall be Kadash to Yahuwah for the priest. So again, he's going to do another wave offering, but this time this will be the fullness of first fruits. And I'm going to explain what this is like. Because there's a feast day that is like this. That you do something before you get to the feast day. Which you already know which day that is. Barak Yahuwah. And you shall proclaim on the self same day that it might be a Kadash assembly unto you. You shall do no survival work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. All your dwellings, wherever you reside, wherever you live. Throughout your generations. The feast says does not end until Yahuwah returns and restarts the earth, renew the earth. Right here, he tells you when you reap the harvest of the land, you shall not make clean riddance. So basically what he's saying is don't empty it. Leave some of the, the fruits, leave some of the food for those who are poor and needy, for the widows, so that they can get something to eat as well. So that's what Yahuwah is saying right here, for the poor and for the stranger. Now, Barak Yahuwah, if you go down a bit, let me show you another feast day that is similar to this. This right here is the first day of the month, and this is um, the memorial blowing of shofars, right? Now, if you go after and go down a bit, this is where I want you to look at. Now, the 10th day of the seventh month is what? Yom Kippurim, the feast of Atun, the day of Atun. And it shall be an, a Kadash assembly unto you, and you shall afflict your soul and offer an offering made by fire. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is Yom Kippurim. Notice it says do no work. It didn't say do no servile work, because this day falls right on the Shabbat. And to make an atone for, for you before Yahuwah Aleichem. Now listen to this right here. Let me go down a bit. Now listen to this. Because remember, you're supposed to do the fast on the ninth day, not the tenth day. Because you do not fast on the Shabbat. Now it says, it shall be unto you a Shabbat of rest. And you shall afflict your souls 
in the ninth day of the month at evening, not the tenth day. And it says, from even unto evening, you shall celebrate your Shabbat. Now, some people use this right here to say, well, this is the only place that Yahuwah says the Shabbat is at evening. This is the only place. And it clearly shows that they don't study the scripture. Because if you go back to Genesis, that's the first place that Yahuwah tells you when a day begins. And a lot of people will not go to Genesis and explain it and break that down. They will go to books like Matthew and, you know, books like Numbers and all that stuff and try to tell you when a day begins. If you're going to show me, you need to go to creation, Genesis. And what does Genesis says? And the even and the bakar, the daylight, were the first yum. What comes first? Evening, darkness. When Yahuwah made the earth, what was first? What was present first on the earth? Was it light or was it darkness? The Yahuwah says, let there be darkness, and darkness came to be. Light was over and over the face of, of, of the water of the deep and all that stuff. It says darkness was presented first. Then Yahuwah says, let there be light. Then light came after. So darkness came first in creation. When you are conceived in your mother's womb, are you in light or are you in darkness? When you are born in your mother's womb, are you in light or are you in darkness? You're in darkness. And then you come out of the womb into light. Even creation shows this. When something is created, when you make a house, does the house have power when you start to lay the foundation and all that stuff? No, it's in darkness. There's no light. There's no power connected to the house. There's no light, no light source. So you create in the darkness. And when you complete it, then you connect the light. So you see, darkness comes first. You cannot change that. Cannot change that. I've talked to persons and asked them, you know, about um, what was made first in creation. And most would tell me, well, not uh, most, but some will tell me that light was created first. Do you know why they think that way? Because of religion. If you should go into, if you should go on Google or go into some assemblies in religion, especially Christianity, and ask them what was the first thing that Yah made, the most I made, they will tell you light. When you go on Google and ask them what was the first thing created in creation, Google tells you light. And I'm like, which Bible are they reading? Which scriptures are they reading? Which word are they reading? Because it could not be the word of Yahuwah. It could not be the word of Yahuwah. So, when you look at creation, when Yahuwah made the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void and darkness. It didn't say light. It said darkness. So that's quite clear. Barak Yahuwah. So you might be saying, all right, let's see additional proof that the Feast of First Fruits is actually the same time period as Pentecost. Because the Feast of First Fruits is not in the first month. It is actually in the third month, in the middle of the third month, around the middle of the third month. And I'm going to show you proof to that. Now let's jump to Barak Yahuwah. Let's jump to Jubilees. And we're going to go to chapter 15, Barak Yahuwah. Now if, we, if you go back a bit, you will see where Yahuwah gave Abraham the promise. And he changed his name. And it was during the third month that he changed his name and gave him the promise. No. Look at this, everyone. Barak Yahuwah. Halal Yah. Man, thank you, Abba. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Abba Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Now it says, And in the fifth year of the fourth week of this jubilee, in the third month, in the middle of the month, Abram celebrated the feast of first fruits. Well, this is also where he changed his name. But if you go back, you'll see where he gave the promise. Abram celebrated, or Abraham celebrated the feast of first fruits. When? In the third month, in the middle of the third month, not the first month. If you look at the sheaf, that time period is in the first month. And if that's when you celebrate first fruits, you're celebrating first fruit at a wrong time period. And he, and he offered a new offering. And he offered new offerings on the altar. The first fruits of the produce unto Yahuwah, a heifer and a goat, 
and a sheep on the altar as a burnt sacrifice unto Yahuwah. Their fruit offerings and their drink offerings he offered upon the altar with frankincense. And Yahuwah appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, and this is where Yahuwah gave him the covenant, changed his name, all that stuff. Neither shall your name no longer be called Abram, but it shall be called Abraham, the father of much nations. Because remember the word for father is Abba, Abba. So A-B gives you Abba, Abba. So this should be Abar. That's why I say Abarham. I know they put it here as, as Abraham, but it's not Abraham. It's Abar, Abba, Abar, Abarham. That's, his, that's the correct pronunciation of Abraham's correct name. So it's not Abraham, it's Abar. Just like Abba, Abba Father, Abba, because that's what he is, a father, Abba. A bar. And then this one would be a bar, Abram, Abram, or a bar, him. So, Barak Yahuwah. Also, down to verse 15 is where he also changed Sarah's name from Sarai to Sarah. This is where he changed her name as well, Barak Yahuwah. So as you can see, when did Abraham celebrated the feast of first fruits? He celebrated in the third month. Now I'm going to give you more as well. I'm not done yet. There's still going to be more. Let's jump to chapter 44 and let's go to Yasharal. In chapter 44, verse 1, it reads that, And Yasharal took his journey from Haran, from his host, on the renewing of the third month. It's not new moon. It's not new moon. Go look up this word in the Hebrew and you will see the word hadash. Just like the word berit hadasha, which means renewed covenant. Hadash. Hadasha is the same word. It's just that it has additional letters and it's the same meaning. No, hadash does not mean moon it's not the word for moon the word for moon is yara yara go look this up because i see a lot of people going off the moon because they see in the english it says new moon and full moon and all that nonsense and they don't understand that you cannot use the english to be a type of final reference point because remember the scriptures were not written in english they were written in what Abarit, Hebrew, not English. So you got to go back to the original and find out what this means. And even the Strongs, you cannot really rely fully or solely on the Strongs because the Strongs, they try to tamper with some of the words. Like, for instance, where they put for the word Barak, this word is pagan, but I'm just showing you what they put there. They put for the word Barak right in the Strongs. They give you two meanings, a positive meaning and a negative meaning. They tell you that the word Barak means to bless and to curse. And that's, and that's why people today misunderstood what Ayub, Job's wife, really said to him. Everybody assumed, believed that Ayub, Job's wife, was telling him to curse Yahuwah and die because of what the Strongs did. They placed these two negative words into one word. Yahuwah says Baraka and curse should not come from the same mouth. So how can one word give you a positive and a negative meaning? And the letters don't change. Unless the letters change. If the letters change, if there's changing with letters, then that one sounding of a word can give you two meanings. But it's the same letter. Barak cannot mean to respect and to curse at the same time. It does not mean that. And that's another misconception. So you cannot solely rely on the Strongs. And that's what they did with the word Hadash. They put it there, they put month, but they also put moon as well. And then when you look at the, 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 the root of the word, it takes you back and it says month. It, it says month only. It does not, no longer says moon. This is why I love the SKJV Strongs. 
because they do it a little better. And they try to, as sometimes they give you the pure Arabic word, meaning there's no E, it's solely an E. So like you will see Barak for the word. And then when you click on the root, go back to the root, it will show you Barak with all E's, no E's. So take that out of your mind, take that out of what you thought you knew because the word Hadash does not mean moon, it means month. It means to renew. That's what it means, to renew. So on the renewing of the third month, on the beginning or on the start, that's what it's saying, on the beginning of the third month, on the, the, the third month, during the third month time period, when the third month begins, and he went on the way of the well, this is Yasharal, of the oath, and he offered a sacrifice to Alua of his father, Yatasa, on the seventh of this month. So the seventh day he offered a sacrifice on the seventh day of the third month. And Yasharal remembered the dream that he had seen at Bat Al, and he feared to go down into Mitzrayim. And while he was thinking of sending word to Yosef, Joseph to come to him that he would not go down. He remained there seven days. If perchance he could see a vision as to where he should remain or go. So when it was the seventh day, he did, you know, these offerings. And then, you know, at that time period, he remembered the dream that he had. And he stayed seven more days. So seven and seven equals what? Fourteen. And he celebrated the harvest feast of the first fruits with old grain, for in all the land of Canaan was there was not a handful of seed in the land, for the famine was over all the beasts and cattle and birds, and also over man. Now listen to this. And it says, On the sixteenth appeared, Yahuwah appeared unto him. So you see, Barak Yahuwah, he as well celebrated the feast when? The feast of first was when? In the third month. In the third month. Now let's go to the calendar and look at the calendar. Barak Yahuwah. Now as you can see, all that is in yellow, the numbers that are in yellow are Ashar Shania, the 12th month. The numbers that are in red are Abibya, the first month. And here we got the Pasa on Leaven Bread. We got the sheaf wave of the first fruits. Then we got the count of the seven Shabbats. Now, this is the second month. And then we got the second Pasa in the second month. The second Pasa is on the 14th day of the second month. The same way the first Pasa is on the 14th day of the first month. The second Pasa is the 14th day of the second month. It's easy to remember. Really easy to remember. So if, for, if per chance you could not keep the first Passah, probably because you were unclean or whatever, you can do so on the second month, the 14th day of the second month. So you continue your count until you get to the seven Shabbat. And here it is, the seven Shabbat. And the next day, which is the 14th of what? The third month, Shalishia, the third month, the 14th, Day of the third month is Shabbat, Pentecost, first fruits. This is when first fruits is the same day as Pentecost. It's also known as Pentecost. And what did we remember happened on Pentecost, everyone? This was the time period that the apostles were presented as first fruits unto Yahuwah, and they were the first of much to receive the immersion of the Ru Akadash. Ruamu Yahuwah, Rak Yahuwah. They were presented unto Yahuwah as first fruits because they were in the upper room giving praise and esteem unto Yahuwah, being in one mind and one accord. And during that this time period, they received what? Let me go and show you the scripture because I don't want anyone to say I'm making this up. Ruamu Yahuwah. Even though that's a scripture that we all should know. But for if someone is here watching that don't know, let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to the book of Acts real quick. Acts chapter 2. 
No, verse 1 says, And when the day of Shabbat, Pentecost first fruits, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Ruach and began to spoke with other tongues as the rule gave them utterance. Ruma, mu, yahua. So, <laughs> man, and if you go back, if you go back to Jubilees, you realize that, 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 that um, Abraham's son, Yatasak, he was born on what? First fruits. Yahua changed Abraham and Sarah's name on first fruits. Yatasak was born on first fruits. Ruma, mu, yahua. Yashara kept the feast of first fruits. Then, the apostles were presented with the Ruach Adash on the day of first fruits. Ruma, Mu, Yahuwah. A lot took place during this time period. So you see, we misunderstood when we saw verse 10 in O Yakra, Leviticus 23. We misunderstood that. And upon reading the scriptures, something was off. Something felt off. Something was really off. And on seeking Yahuwah, even speaking to Yeshai, that was a time period that Yahuwah, right before he put Yeshai to sleep, this is what Yahuwah did. He got us to recalibrate the calendar to match and to line up with Yahusha's death, burial, and resurrection. And that's when he also taught us about the equalox, the equal daylight, equal night. This is something that we miss. Majority believes the the, 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 the the first month begins during the spring equal NOX. But it's not during the spring e um, NOX. It's during the equalox period. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on the channel and watch the video that I did regarding this. There's a video on the channel regarding the equalox, the calendar and the equalox, the equalox versus the equal NOX. X. Ruma, Boya, boy. Especially when you dive into Enoch, that's what I did. I show you the breakdown of Enoch. So, when you look at it, when you do the count, you realize that no, when you do the, the, the Shabbat as the first, Passah as the second, Matzah as the third, Pentecost as first fruit as the fourth, Trumpets as the fifth, a tune as the sixth, then what? The final feast is what? Sakut as the seventh. See, seven feasts for the number seven, for the seven Kangastan menorah. Not eight, not nine, not ten. When you add other feasts like Purim and Hanukkah or Hanukkah, that's when you get additional numbers. And that's why the Jewish people. They have a nine Kangastan menorah, not seven. That is the reason why they have a nine Kangastan menorah, because they do these other feasts. They do the feast like Purim and they do Hanukkah, Hanukkah. That's why they have nine Kangastans and not seven Kangastans. I've always used to wonder why is it that the Jewish people have nine Kangastans and we have seven? And Yahuwah showed me why. This is the reason why. Because they do Purim and they do Hanukkah. Barak Yahuwah Yahusha. Ruma Mu Yahuwah. So, all this theme to Abba Yahuwah, Ruma Mu Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. The link to this calendar is on the channel. If you go back to the video that I did with the calendar, you will see the link for it. So you can get it, so you can download it. In that video as well, I explain the feast days, you know, on the beginning of them, which days are, which days are Kadash assembly, you know, high day Shabbat, so you know when to take a day off and when you don't need a day off, stuff like that. So go back to that video because I'm not going to walk through it now because it's going to take time and I've already done it, so I don't really need to. So go back to that video on the channel and there you'll find the, the, the channel where the video where I broke down all the days, explain all the, the high day Shabbats, 
the assemblies, all that stuff, the feast. So you can see it and know which days do you need off. Because remember, we still use the Gregorian calendar today. When we do work, we still use this calendar. So we will know we will need to know which days in which months do we need to request a day off. Do we need to let our bosses know, hey, I will not be able to work this day or that day. So that we keep pure unto Yahuwah and we do not compromise our walk with Yahuwah. Because Yahuwah says obedience is better than sacrifice. And this is where we got to put our trust and our amunah, our faith in Yahuwah. Because the enemy wants us to defile ourselves. The enemy wants us to be disobedient and to not walk in obedience, not walk in truth. And he will do whatever he can to get you not to keep the Shabbat. Not to keep the feast days, not to keep the commands and statutes of Yahuwah, not to keep the Torah. And this is why in Joshua 23, verses 6 to 7, Yahuwah says you need to be what? Bold, brave when guarding his Torah. Because majority of those in the world, they're going to come up against you. They're going to call you names, they're going to laugh at you, mock you, scarn you, and all that stuff just to allow you to feel bad so that you can't take the pressure anymore, and you give up. You give up on Yah. Do not fall for that trap. Do not fall for that deception. Do not allow Hashitan to work on your emotions and lead you astray from Yahuwah. This life that we are living, we're just pilgrims passing through. This is not forever. This is just a temporary place. So we need to make sure that we have our place in the permanent place that's to come, not this life. Allah hu Yah. So this is the breakdown of the whole feast of, of first fruits and Pentecost, Barak Yahuwah. All is themed to Abba Yahuwah. Yahuwah is the one that corrects. Yahuwah is the one that edifies. Yahuwah is the one that rebukes. Yahuwah is the one that teaches. Halal hu ya, ruma mu Yahuwah. To the Rabbi Yahuwah. So all is themed to Abba Yahuwah. This is the end of today's lesson, Barak Yahuwah. For any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or you can reach out to us on the email. The emails will always be in the description. So if you have any like private issue or matter, you don't want to public or publicize, you can do so on the email. Barak Yahuwah Yahusha. All esteemed to Abba Yahuwah. To that to everyone that has supported. Greatly, greatly appreciate the support, the likes, the share. The palal, that is very, very important. One can chase a thousand, two put ten thousand to flight. The enemy does not want these truths to come out. The enemy wants us to stay in our ignorance. The enemy wants us to stay in darkness and the lies and the deception. And that's not of Yahuwah. Yahuwah wants us to be free. That's why he came and he died and he rose. So that we can be free. Allah Yah. So even though I ask that Yahuwah continue to Barakata Ushamarata, continue to show respect, favor unto you, and to guard you in all you're doing, in your going out, in your coming in, and all that your hand touches, Allah Huya, in all your family, in all your dwellings, throughout your generations, Ruma Mu Yahuwah. Enjoy the rest of your Shabbat, you, until we meet again, Barak Yahuwah. Shabbat Shalom, beloved family. Ruma Mu Yahuwah.